quick revision video for all six organic mechanisms studied at A-level. So we're dealing with the AS1s first, radical substitution, electrophilic addition, nucleophilic substitution, and then we'll move on to the A-level ones, electrophilic substitution, nucleophilic addition, and nucleophilic substitution again. So we'll start with radical substitution and the example I'm using is cyclohexane plus chlorine. So there's the overall equation and that will be classed as mono substitution because one hydrogen from the cyclohexane has been substituted with one chlorine. And notice that the reaction is carried out under UV light. So the mechanism operates via three steps. So the first step is the initiation step. That's where the UV light splits the covalent bond between the two chlorine atoms into two free radicals. And the dot there represents the unpaired electron. So that's referred to as homolytic fission because there's an equal sharing of the two electrons from the covalent bond that's broken. So in other words, each chlorine atom receives one electron from the broken bond. Next we get the propagation steps. We always get two of those. So the first one, you take your, in this case, cyclohexane and your chlorine radical, and we are going to generate an HCl molecule. So chlorine radicals strip out the hydrogen and we get HCl, and the leftovers is a radical. So in this case, it will be C6H11 radical. So the radical that's just been produced feeds into propagation two. And basically what happens is the radical strips out one of those chlorines and generates this molecule here and we get a chlorine radical left over. And finally, termination. So you take any two radicals that have been produced in the mechanism and combine them. So I've gone for those two there. Now, if the chlorine was present in excess, then the chlorine radicals that are reformed in the second propagation step they could then go and start stripping out the next hydrogen and you get another pair of propagation steps and that can continue ultimately till all the hydrogens have gone. So the next mechanism we'll look at is electrophilic addition and I'm going to use cyclohexene and chlorine as my example. So keeping it very similar to the previous one. So there's the overall reaction. Cyclohexene C6H10 reacts with chlorine and we get an addition reaction so two reactants become one product. So the mechanism now, there's the cyclohexene and the chlorine side by side. Ordinarily, a chlorine molecule is nonpolar because of the identical electronegativity in the two CLs. However, as it gets closer to the carbon-carbon double bond, the electron density around the chlorine is going to be repelled towards the right here. And so we get a dipole across the molecule that looks like that. Now this can act as an electrophile, an electron pair acceptor, because we've got this slightly positive part to the molecule. So we show that like this. So a pair of electrons from the double bond attracted to this chlorine, and then the pair of electrons in this bond are going to be completely repelled onto that chlorine and break the bond. And this time we get heterolytic fission. That's because the chlorine, this one here, gets both of the electrons from the bond. That's going to give us this carbocation, a chloride ion, and then the chloride ion attaches itself to the positively charged carbon like that. And we get the product 1,2-dichlorocyclohexane. So we're finishing with nucleophilic substitution. Example I'm using is chlorocyclohexane with the hydroxide ion. So you could be reacting with, say, sodium hydroxide or something like that. So there's the equation. So we'll look at the mechanism now. The carbon-chlorine bond in the chlorocyclohexane will have a dipole across it because of the higher electronegativity of chlorine. The hydroxide ion is going to act as a nucleophile, an electron pair donor, and it's going to donate that pair of electrons on the oxygen to the slightly positive carbon, and that's going to repel the pair of electrons in that carbon-chlorine bond completely onto the chlorine and break the bond by heterolytic fission. So the products look like that. So moving on to electrophilic substitution. First example I'm using is benzene with nitric acid. So there's two representations of the equation. 
and you can see that we're getting mononitration taking place. So in other words, one of the hydrogens on the benzene ring is replaced by the nitro group from the nitric acid and we get this nitro benzene. So the conditions for the reaction, 50 to 55 degrees C temperature, that's really important because if you go above that, you run the risk of polynitration taking place, whereby more than one hydrogen is replaced or substituted with a nitro group, and they can be explosive. The nitric acid needs to be concentrated, and you also need a concentrated sulfuric acid catalyst. So moving on to the mechanism, the first part of that is the formation of the electrophile, the electron pair acceptor. And that happens when you take the two concentrated acids and they react to form. The important ion there is the nitronium ion because that's going to react with the benzene ring. So we'll bring them into play now and a pair of electrons from the pi electron cloud will be attracted to the nitronium ion and we get this unstable intermediate. Really important that you cover five carbons with this partial pi electron cloud and don't forget the plus sign in the middle there. So like I said that's unstable, it stabilizes itself by losing this H as an H plus and it does that by a pair of electrons in this bond goes back in to reform the pi electron cloud. So we show that like that. So the products of that little step is the nitrobenzene and an H plus ion and the final thing we need to do is reform the catalyst so we take the H plus and the HSO4 minus ion formed in the first step and we get the sulfuric acid back. Second example we'll look at is benzene with bromine. So again, two representations of the overall reaction. And again, you can see that only one hydrogen has been substituted with a bromine. So we could call this monobromination. Conditions wise, we need a catalyst, AlBr3 or FeBr3. And the catalyst is often referred to as a halogen carrier. Now you can also use iron. The iron reacts with the bromine first to form FeBr3, which then acts as the catalyst. So mechanism, first step again, formation of the electrophile, the electron pair acceptor. So the equation for that, I'm using FeBr3, but you can also use AlBr3, of course. The important ion there is the Br plus ion. Very similar to the previous mechanism. So a pair of electrons from the pi electron cloud is going to be attracted to that Br plus ion. We get the unstable intermediate and it stabilizes itself by losing the pair of electrons in the carbon hydrogen bond. And we produce those species there and we need to get the catalyst back. So it's the H plus ion plus the FeBr4 minus ion going to HBr and FeBr3. Moving on to nucleophilic addition now. So we've got three examples for this one. So the first one I'm looking at is propanal with sodium tetrahydridoborate 3 and that's NaBH4 formula wise. The NaBH4 is a reducing agent and it's represented in the reaction by the H in square brackets. So for this example we take the propanal, react it with two moles of reducing agent and we get a primary alcohol, we get propan1ol. Now I've got a silly way to remember how this works. I call it the oxygen sandwich. So the two H's are like two slices of bread and we put one of them either side of the O. So the H becomes H2OH, so oxygen sandwich. So moving on to the mechanism now, the NaBH4 is a source of hydride ions or H minus ions. So you can see there that that's going to be able to act as a nucleophile. It's going to donate that pair of electrons to the slightly positive carbon and that's going to repel the pi electron pair in the CO double bond completely onto the oxygen. That's going to give us this unstable intermediate here. So if we bring a water molecule into play and we're going to form a bond with the hydrogen, one of the hydrogens of the water molecule like that, and that's going to generate the alcohol product and an OH minus ion. Second example is very, very similar, propanone this time, not propanol, with NaBH4. So there's just a reminder, the NaBH4 is a reducing agent. We represent it with the H in square brackets. And I'm going to use this oxygen sandwich again. So two H's either side of the O. So we get CHOH, we get a secondary alcohol. 
So this is propen 2 all that we've got now. Mechanism, virtually the same. There's a reminder, the NABH4 is a source of hydride ions. So I'll just quickly click through this. A pair of electrons is going to be donated to that slightly positive carbon. It's going to repel the pi electron pair up onto the oxygen and we get this unstable intermediate. Bring a water molecule into play, grab hold of the hydrogen like that and there's the products. Third example of nucleophilic addition we're going to look at is the reaction between propanol and sodium cyanide with sulfuric acid. So we'll just explain that mixture first. So sodium cyanide and sulfuric acid react together to form, most importantly, the HCN molecule, and that's what's going to react with the propanol. HCN is a highly toxic gas. It would be too dangerous to use it sort of in, in the lab, so it's generated as part of the reaction. So there's the overall equation, and in this example, we're getting 2-hydroxybutane nitrile. So this is classed as a hydroxy nitrile, and the important thing we've done here is we've extended the carbon chain by one carbon, so we've gone from three carbons in propanol to four carbons in the product. That's really important in organic synthesis. So we'll look at the mechanism now. Very, very similar to what we've just seen. So a pair of electrons from the nucleophile, the electron pair donor, is going to be attracted to the carbon, slightly positive carbon, repels the pi electron pair on the oxygen, and we get this intermediate. And this time, I'm going to use an H plus ion. You can use water, but I'm going to use H plus to show you a slightly different way of representing this specific reaction. And we're going to grab hold of that like that and form the product. There's just a reminder that water can also be used at this stage for this reaction, and if that was the case, you would get an OH- ion as well. So the final mechanism we're looking at is nucleophilic substitution. So the example I'm using is 1-chloropropane with KCN, which needs to be in ethanol. There's the reaction. So you can see it's a straightforward substitution reaction where the chlorine is substituted with the CN group, so we get the product butane nitrile, which is a nitrile. And the, again, the important thing here is we've extended that carbon chain by one. So we've gone from three carbons to four. So the mechanism now, so the CN minus ion can act as a nucleophile electron pair donor. And same sort of thing going on. A pair of electrons from the carbon attracted to the slightly positive carbon in the CCL bond. The pair of electrons in the CCL bond are repelled onto the chlorine. That's going to give us a straightforward substitution and looks like that.